Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to Maker Public Webinar Series. Uh, the webinar topic today is uh, XP Secret Breaker, High Voltage Secret Breaker Motion Measurement. I'm Jumaidi from Indonesia as application engineer. I will be the moderator today and also as a panelist to answer any question on this webinar. Uh, today's webinar is recording and the presenter is uh, Nils Wexlund, who is the product manager for Secret Breaker in Sweden Factory. You can submit any question during presentation and I will try to answer your question in the QA session at the end of this uh, webinar. On the right screen, you can see uh, the panel to enter any question. You can type in your question in the, the chat box. Please be reminded, you will be automatically muted. This is to avoid unnecessary background noise. Okay, I think without any further delay, let's start this uh, webinar. Grace, please. Welcome everyone and thank you for attending this webinar. By the way, this is Michael Evangelista and I will be your moderator for today. Just a few reminders that you are in listen only mode to avoid unnecessary background noise. However, you can type in your questions anytime in the question box and those questions will be answered by our pa panelists by the end of this presentation. The recording and certificate of this webinar will be sent out in this time. And by the way, this is a live presentation from our expert uh, from Sweden, Mr. Niels Wacklen. And our topic for today is about the measurement and analysis of, uh, of contact travel on high voltage circuit breakers. So without any further ado, let me give you to Niels. Niels. Good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Niels Wacklen. And I, I work as a product manager for uh, the circuit breaker testing equipment in the fa Megger factory in Sweden. And I've been uh, employed by Megger and Programma, the former, uh, since actually 36 years, I, I guess, and, and been working with circuit breakers testing almost all the time. So, uh, and this webinar about measurement of travel, of contact travel, will start now. So I will close my camera here. So, can you see my screen now, the, the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, good. So, let's start. So, we jump right into it. So uh, why do we want to measure contact motion? Yeah, there are the several reasons for that. And one is to apply to standards. I will come to that later. Um, and uh, <clears throat> another is to obtain important information about the circuit breaker and the condition of the circuit breaker as a may be a part of, of the maintenance program or a maintenance strategy and uh, collect data for future future trending analysis. Uh, and that is something you do uh, preferably in, in the beginning at the commissioning. So you have something to compare with and to see to trend against. Um, and um, Maybe the most uh, important thing is to discover potential problems uh, at an early stage in order to prevent serious damage. So, so uh, talk a little bit about, about the parameters that you can derive from the contact motion measurement. So there are different parameters. Well, I'm just um, mentioned some of them here, stroke length, uh, the velocity, contact velocity, closing and open speed, uh, contact penetration, it's named wiping sometimes, um, and uh, 
that is made also in combination with contact timing to obtain. I will explain all these parameters later. Arc and contact length in combination with dynamic contact resistance measurement. And we have also damping characteristics, um, which can be defined in different ways. So, and the problems that can be really revealed with contact motion measurement. Actually, do you, is my screen switching now or not? Actually, it's not switching, sir. Sorry. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm a little bit confused here because, let's see again. It was working before. Hmm. Sorry for this. I need to see the, the uh, screen too. It's not coming along. Dragon, sir. We can see the uh, front page. Yeah. No, no, no I think. Yep. But uh, now it's strange because I cannot, I, I see you only. Okay, we, we will try in that way. For me, it's a little bit strange because I need to look at another screen now. Uh, perhaps. So we, we try this. No? Oh. You mean it's switching, sir? No, it's not switching, sir. It's not switching. Something is wrong here with, and when we tested before, it was working. Uh, I'm very, very sorry. What is it? Yeah, I can fix it. Okay, now it's, can you see the second? Yes, sir, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Now, now it seems to 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 be okay. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. I I already talked about this screen. Uh, and here now on the, okay. I need to look at my second screen. Uh, so the okay. This was also finished. So what kind of um, problems can you reveal with contact motion measurement? Yeah, of course, if, since you're measuring stroke, you can see incorrect stroke. Uh, you can see if the close or open velocity differs from, from your reference values or from the specified values from the manufacturer. And that could be due to wrong adjustment or other problems like springs, lubrication, pressure, etc. And uh, another thing you can reveal is excessive arcing contact wear, um, uh, lack of 
close and open damping. That's a very serious uh, thing with a circuit breaker that can make it, um, make a big damage, mechanical damage, if if it, it continues and get worse and worse. Um, another thing is too early damping, uh, which will cause that the velocity in the arcing zone becomes too low, and <clears throat> then uh, the conditions to, to extinguish the arc is not according to to the, what the manufacturer specifies. There could be also a problem with rebound, rebouncing contacts at, at both close and open, and re, uh, which can cause then at opening restrike of the arc. It can also lead to exploded breaker in that case, because when when you have a <clears throat> this situation, there is no energy left to extinguish the arc if the breaker is already open. I will explain a little bit in the graph later. Uh, and other anomalities in the motion curve shape. So here we have the, uh, oh, I cannot point because it's on the second screen. This, this, okay. I have to try to get this working because I need, I need the pointer. Ah, now you see the pointer. Okay. So, okay, stroke here. That's um, the, the distance between the fully open and the steady state closed position. That's the stroke, contact stroke. And contact penetration is the distance from the first contact touch of the arcing contact and the steady state closed position is distance here. Uh, over travel is this part. Uh, some breakers has it, some doesn't have it. So that depends on the design. So that that is also something to compare with, with, the, with the reference. Um, speed calculation point for calculating uh, closing speed and opening speed. So basically, it's the average speed between these points that that is the the, the speed that you calculate, and <clears throat> that is uh, something that the manufacturer or breaker should specify. <clears throat> However, if if there is no such specification, you can always use like the default value, which is contact touch and contact separation uh, for uh, closing and opening respectively. Uh, and, and the other, the lower point is 10 milliseconds before and, and for opening that means 10 milliseconds after the upper point. And that will then correspond to arcing zone more or less an arcing zone is, is, is the zone where the arc is supposed to be extinguished. And after the arcing zone, the damping zone starts to dampen out the, um, the force, uh, the energy that, that you have in the moving contact. So if you don't have a, a, a good damping, then it can, Hit, mechanically hit the stop here and, and actually destroy, be destroyed. So at open, you have also an over travel and uh, a rebound. And what I told about rebound before, if this rebound goes longer up, you have a bigger bound here, then it's a risk that the contacts come too close to each other and you get the re-strike of the arc. 
and that is a dangerous condition because then the, it will be a standing arc that will cause the breaker to explode. Um, and uh, or at the closed state, you can also have a rebound, meaning that the curve goes down. And if it goes down too much, then you see that it goes below um, the level of contact touch. And you get a small interruption, actually. So that, that is not good either. Uh, something more here? No, I don't think so. That so a little bit about the standard uh, of breakers, circuit breaker testing is IEC, this international standard 62.271. So uh, these standards are basically made for uh, time test, uh, but it also has sections for, for maintenance and, co and commissioning and so on, but they are not so so well uh, it's not so much written in those ones the, the biggest part is type test and routine test for circuit breaker manufacturers but however uh, it, it's a good uh, reference and um, yeah what does it say about motion measurement it, it doesn't really say this uh, by the way the section 10 is about uh, commissioning and, and and maintenance and so on. So it refers to section 7, that is um, the routine test in factory. So and motion is not uh, it does it's not uh, mandatory uh, in 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 the standard, <clears throat> but I think. For, for tire test, it's mandatory, and it's mandatory to, to make some kind of, of reference graph that the, the, the manufacturer have in, in their procedure to test, to do the final test of, of breakers. So they have a reference graph that they compare with. Uh, so, um, so here, it, what does it say here? Uh, it says a little bit vague that a record can be made of the mechanical travel characteristics where the circuit breaker has been assembled as a complete circuit breaker for the first time site and so on. Uh, so so it, it's not really mandatory, but it's, it's a very good thing um, to do to, to reveal the problems in circuit breaker. And, and if we read what, what's uh, this section seven, which is for the routine test in, in the factory, um, then it says that, yeah, if the measurement, the, the routine test then, meaning the routine test, is performed on site, the manufacturer shall state the preferred measuring procedure. So this, this is important, oh, sorry. This is uh, important, I think, because this means actually that manufacturers, they, they have a responsibility to, to do this um, for customers uh, to, to, to explain how to do the motion measurement. So especially for, for buyers of circuit breakers, they can put requirements on the manufacturer to, to, to get reference graphs, to, to get instructions how to connect transducers and so on. And then, then you, they can even refer to, to this standard and say, this is how, how it says. So that it's important to know. So, and what does it say more here? The mechanical travel characteristics can be recorded directly using a travel transducer or similar device on the circuit breaker contact system or at another convenient location on the drive, oh, sorry, um, on the drive to the contact system where there is a direct connection and the representative image of the contact stroke can be achieved. 
And then it says also that mechanical travel characteristics shall be preferable uh, a continuous curve shown in figure 23. So that the 23 is this kind of idealized uh, curve for a so so this is something that yeah how the standard describes how travel motion is done. So we go on here. Um, so I, now I, I will go into more practically uh, how how to do this and different methods uh, of of um, uh, travel motion measurement. So. <clears throat> So the different first different ways to attach the transducer. So one is direct to moving contact or its operating rod with linear movement. And this can be done on certain brake types, not all. For instance, bulk oil breakers, oil minimum breakers, some SF6 dead tank breakers, most vacuum. So uh, vacuum breakers, and um, uh, second one is direct to moving contact with angular movement. This this is a kind of special desi design of circuit breaker. I have a picture of that. I will show later. But the moving contact is actually as a rotating um, motion. So, so that one you can measure with the angular movement. Uh, then you can do indirect attachment with linear movement, uh, for example, on operating rod at driving mechanism, and indirect attachment with an angular movement, uh, for example, on gear between operating rod and breaker column. I have pictures of all of these I will show. This is the first example. This is a bulk oil breaker with huge tank here filled with oil. Um, up on the top here, that's where the transducer is connected or attached. And on the top here, there is a small uh, lid you can open and, and you can put a rod in that lid, a threaded rod and screw that rod directly into the main contact, which is down here. So in this case, you have a direct connection between transducer and main contact. So you see here the, the enlargement of, of the transducer and the, the rod here going down in this big tank. Next example was with the oil minimum breaker. This is an old um, medium voltage breaker. So it's the same principle actually. Uh, but here you, yeah, there, there is also a hole here in the top and you, you can put the rod down in that hole and, and there are threads in the main contact. So this is a, one-to-one -one measurement of the contact motion. Next example, this is the dead tank breaker with indirect linear measurement. So meaning that you use a, a linear transducer, but it's connected to, to this rod that actually is doing, um, it, it turns, it's, it's a rotary motion on this rod. You have this lever that yeah, forwards the, the, the motion to, to this joint here and makes it from, from rotary to a linear motion. Next example, it's also a dead tank with indirect linear measurement. Uh, so 
uh, here you cannot see actually what happens in but since the, the main contact is located in this housing and moving in this direction you can uh, you can figure out that the linear motion here is is not uh, exactly the same there is some link system in here that you That you use to measure. Another example, <clears throat> another dead tank breaker. Um, in this case, you use a rotor transducer placed down here uh, to this um, to this shaft or axis, and you see here you have operating shafts, shafts between, that are connected between the phases. So, <clears throat> so, and this motion that is that it's connected to the linear movement of the, of the moving contact, but it's not a direct connection. So, Next one, in this case, it's a direct linear measurement because this rod is connected directly to the main contact. It's also dead tank breaker. Uh, now to a very common drive from ABB or actually, yeah, HMA. And here you actually put the transducer in the driving mechanism. Uh, and for for certain breakers like certain SF6 uh, dead tank breakers, the the shaft from the operating mechanism goes directly through the main contact. So here you have also one to one measurement, direct linear measurement. So, and the same with this one, it's also ABB, like a, a sister to the HMA or a later design for HMB, this mechanism. So linear direct measurement. Now on to, to indirect angular measurement. You see uh, the the transducer here is located. Uh, the operating mechanism is here. So from the operating mechanism, you have a, 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 a rod going from neck into this gear house. So and if we look at the enlargement here, the, the rod uh, is is actually yeah it's coming through this pipe in connecting to this point and that this rod goes to the other phases phase d and c and this rod goes down to the the opening spring which is located in in this compartment here and there is also a rod going up uh, up to the breaker pull here to the moving contact. So in this case, you measure a rotary motion um, to, to reflect the linear movement in here. So that's an indirect angular measure. Uh, this is uh, also an indirect angular measurement, but in this case, yeah, there are actually two examples. This is the same as on the previous one, but this one is uh, a special operating mechanism from ABB called BLG, where you measure the motion of uh, the, the closing mechanism. So, and, and that's an important measurement to, to measure damping of the closing. 
So, and this, this uh, part makes uh, a one turn, 360 degrees for each close operation. So the, there is a special reference graph for that one also. So that in that case, it, it's not the measurement on the contact system, it, it's a measurement on the, on the drive actually. But that, that's also important. So <clears throat> what are the advantages with the direct attachment? Yeah, uh, the measured quantity is the real stroke of the moving contact means that you have a one-to-one -one relationship between the movement on the transducer and the movement of the of the contact. Uh, so there are no conversion factors, tables needed, and so on. And motion is clean, undistorted from by gears, mechanical play, or or and so on, torsion, operating rods, etc. So. Um, and yeah, as a result of, of that, at the direct attachment, you can also do absolute measurement. That means that one millimeter at the transducer corresponds to one millimeter at the contact as well. So why, why don't you do this all the time then? No, because it's not possible for all breaker types. It's the opposite almost that it's it's a small part of the installed base of breakers that you can make a, a direct connection to the main contact on. So <clears throat> so because there is no access to the breaker chamber, uh, due to that is it's under SF6 pressure or it can be vacuum or whatever. Uh, or so, and or GIS, you know, you, you cannot reach the, the moving parts inside. Um, so, and, and on some breaker types, uh, the the type where where you have two two breaks in one phase, like a, a T T configuration, um, then. There is a small gear also uh, between the, the two breaking chambers at the top. So, so even if you could measure uh, on the on the pull rod that you have in the column, uh, it's not exactly the same movement that you have at the contacts. So it, it's a little bit complex. So the how time is running here, yeah. Um, so different options of indirect motion measurement. Uh, yeah, the travel in the transducer is a, a, a transducer attachment point is recorded that as is linear or angular. This is more uh, now methods in our system, not, not uh, necessarily how you attach the transducer to. This is how our system can measure in different ways. So, uh, so, so uh, this is a good way to, to use as a footprint or reference to future measurement. So uh, yeah, and, and stroke, velocity, and other motion parameters might not be comparable to factor results, but since an own reference is created, preferable at commissioning, this is considered factor to be satisfactory. So um, th this is something that uh, yeah to consider. If if you don't uh, have instructions or or reference values and so you can always 
create your own reference and then do um, the trending to see changes in the behavior, the mechanical behavior of the circuit breaking. So that, that's with indirect motion. So that meaning that yeah, by 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 uh, Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, implicit that with indirect motion that the motion is not exactly the same as measuring direct at the contact. So that's why your your value cannot be compared exactly with with the reference values for from a manufacturer. Um, and and the another option is to measure the travel in the in the transducer attachment point, linear or angular, <clears throat> and then you can convert the travel by means of a conversion table. So that that can be uh, one way to 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 uh, uh, kind of to create a correct comparable uh, graph comparable to to the factory results you you, you buy by a conversion table and so you can recreate the real travel motion and and in that case you can compare all parameters so here are the different measurement op options in, in the in our system measurement system and i will explain them one by one later and absolute measurement the transducer is reference as, as i said that one millimeter at the transducer uh, at the at the contact is one millimeter at the transducer and you can have both angular and linear transducer in this case, and then it will be presented in the same quantity. Uh, and the second one, absolute measurement with linear conversion factor. That's the same <coughs> presentation in distance and angle. Um, next absolute measurement with conversion table in this case it's only distance as presentation quantity what you see on screen so what you actually do is you convert an angular uh, curve to a linear curve or linear movement relative measurement this is interesting the nominal stroke is reference and the presentation quanti quantity is only distance, like only millimeters, regardless if you're using a rotary or a linear transducer. So now, uh, more explanation for each one of these that I listed. So absolute measurement, the contact mo movement is equal to the transducer's movement. The transducer has to be thoroughly calibrated as it is the reference for the measurement that's that's important uh, the electrical length or angular span of the transducer is the cal calibration quantity uh, so it's independent of the measurement channels reference voltage for instance if you would switch between different instruments like the gm 1700 or 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 eagle, which has different reference voltage, you can still use the same transducer calibration. Uh, the measurement instrument will establish a scale factor, which can be calculated in this way: transducer's electrical length or angular span divided by the reference voltage. So that that scale will have the the unit millimeter per volt. This is perhaps a little bit 
too much information, but <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, absolute measurement with linear conversion factor. Uh, in this case, you do the, the, the measurement according to the absolute method. But in this case, you multiply the scale factor with the conversion factor. Um, so, and the results are shown in the same quantity as measured. The thing is that, uh, yeah, like some breakers, you can you you can have uh, this linear conversion factor. Like you know that one millimeter at at your transducer corresponds to two millimeter at the breaker contact. And there are such types of definitions, and you can also uh, do an angle to distance linear factor, meaning that one degree, for instance, corresponds to 1.2 millimeter at the break contact. That's also possible. So this is an example of the linear conversion factor. So if you would have a transducer here at this point and your moving contact here, you have the relationship that is between this motion and, and the contact motion. The relationship is L2 divided by the L1, the length of the arms here. So that's, and the same here, but you have a different uh, link system. This goes up to the, to the main contact. And, and you have a rod here where you, that goes to operating mechanism. And on the rod, you, you connect your linear transducer and provided that the conditions are like written here, you have the same angle here and here, and the relationship between the motions would be a linear one, uh, which is with a factor L2 divided by L1, the length of the, the levers here. So, another example. This is from the real life, actually, uh, an old generator breaker called the uh, uh, DB from ABB, where this arm, it's a disconnector arm, actually. So uh, this one goes in, in the circular contact path. Uh, and normally you put the transducer here. So in this case, you can calculate that the travel in millimeter among this, um, along this um, circumference of, of the contact path by using the pi and, and so on. Yeah, quite simple. This is a, another example of, of the rotary movement of the main contact. So this is, and uh, Westinghouse breaker uh, on SFA. So <clears throat> it has got four brakes actually per phase. And we, in this compartment up here, there are two, two main contacts. And that's what's shown here. You can see only one of them in this picture. And it's the same on the other side. So, and the movement is, it's a rotary movement. You put the transducer in the middle here, and the whole contact, uh, yeah, this the, the main contact is making a, a rotary uh, movement. So that follows this periphery of, of the circle. Quite interesting. In this case, you, you need to, uh, it's quite, <laughs> complicated to test this breaker because you need to evacuate the SFX case, gas. So <clears throat> to, to be able to attach your transducer here in the middle. And this is basically, I think this is the resistor contact actually, pre-insertion. It's before 
and the main contact is here. You have the resistors here, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, time is a little bit short, but I think we'll manage it. Um, absolute measurement with conversion table. Then you use an angular movement um, and you, you measure with a calibrated transducer. And then you convert the angular movement by a, a, a conversion table to a distance. So that and the advantage with this with with this is that uh, the conversion can be unlinear in order to reflect the geometrical transmission function of the breaker cinematic chain. So, <clears throat> for an, for example, uh, like uh, you you can have different factors for for at, dif at different uh, angles. For example, from no, zero to one degree, that could correspond to two millimeters at the contact, while a step from 30 to 31 degree would correspond to three millimeters. So for each step, you can have you can have a, a different conversion factor. So you can basically reflect any kind of, of transmission graph in that. So this is a common common uh, example it, it's basically what you had in let's see here in this in this picture you have your motion transducer here in the middle and the rod goes up yeah, here up in the column so that's basically what you saw here yeah so <clears throat> so uh, it, this <clears throat> you, you you understand that uh, uh, where's my pointer here? If you put the transducer here, you see that uh, depending on on the position here, you will have different movement. Of, of the contact. It's basically a, a sign graph that it follows. So that's why you need a, a, an unlinear relationship, an, a table that compensates for, for this unlinear re relationship. Sorry. And finally, here, uh, the relative measurement, which actually is a very good method and quick. Uh, it has its advantages, but also some disadvantages. So in this case, the breaker's nominal stroke is used as a reference for the measurement. Uh, and I will explain how that works. So in the first recording session, the scale factor is established. And it takes the nominal stroke, which is the stroke that you put in uh, in the your breaker definition in the software and divides with the difference in voltage you have between the closed position of the breaker and the open position. And then it, it established this scale factor millimeter per volt. And the first recording will be, um, yeah, per definition, it will receive exactly the same stroke as the nominal stroke because that's, that's what you use for your, yeah, so to say, calibration. And uh, the scale is maintained throughout the, the recording session, so, so you can see uh, changes and fluctuations in stroke. But, yeah, so this is the, the advantage. These are the advantages, quick and easy to set up. Uh, no need of transducer calibration. You can use an uncalibrated transducer. And no need of transducer selection even. And it doesn't care if it's a linear or, or a rotary transducer. Both can be used. And it's perfect in most cases to use as a footprint uh, for future comparison and 
understanding analysis. But the disadvantages with the relative method is that it will not reveal incorrect stroke as it assumes that the, the nominal stroke is correct. The first recording will always be exactly as the stroke you have put as, as nominal stroke, regardless if, if the, the real stroke is only 50% of that. So, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a disadvantage with this method. Um, uh, yeah, and depending on, on the transducer attachment point and its mechanical relation to the moving contact, uh, then the, the parameters like motion uh, related parameters, velocity penetration and so on, they, they will not be exactly as the factor uh, reference values. So that, that can be explained in this graph uh, this is uh, actually, uh, if you do this example with the transducer here and compare to the movement here. So if you move uh, that wheel, <coughs> the transducer, now it's 180 degrees, it's too much, but let's say we, we move it 90 degrees. So you will have this deviation from from this would if you would have um, a conversion table, the motion would be like this, or or if you would, would measure directly on the moving contact. But if you measure with with the uh, with the with the relative method, it will have the same scale factor throughout stroke. So in the beginning and the end, of course, you will have the same values, similar at least, but in the middle, you, you can have some deviation. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, now the, the last slide, I think, and the uh, summary methods. So I divided this in attachment way of, of att attachments mechanically to, to the breaker. You have direct and indirect attachment of the transducer and the trans transducer type, linear <coughs> and angular. And the applicable methods in our software and so on. So, so for direct attachment, you can use both linear and angular. You can you can do absolute measurement. Uh, and you can do also with factor and conversion table for angular only. Uh, and the indirect uh, attachment of transducer, yeah, you can use the absolute with factor. And, and, and relative, of course, and absolute measurement also for angular and factor, factor absolute with factor um, and conversion table and relative measurement. So the and and examples here, you see for for the for for the relative, it, it says footprint here. Uh, you can do that both with the linear transducer relative and angular transducer relative. That's made footprint uh, measurements. I I didn't mention here, but also some of, of these other measurements here with indirect um, indirect connection of transducer. That should also be footprints. Uh, if you don't have like a factor that is that is uh, like specified by the by the manufacturer or conversion table or so. Okay, I think that that was the last slide. So we have a few minutes. 
I can stay longer if, if we need also. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful presentation. So You're guys, we, we are now open for any questions that you may have. Please type in in the chat box or um, you can raise your hand if you want to, then we will unmute you if you have a question. Yeah, okay. Because so far, no, no question in the chat box. When I see, I will give more time, maybe one or two minutes to add, uh, everyone if still have uh, any question, if you want to chat, please. Yeah, uh, for the presentation and recording will be shared to the all attendees uh, within 12 days uh, by email. Uh, and also uh, after this, uh, after you close this webinar, you, you can see the some survey. Please help us to, to improve our webinar. We fill that uh, survey after you close this uh, webinar and you also can see some next uh, webinar in our webmaker website in the webmaker tabs there are many many uh, webinar schedule you can choose which one the uh, make you interest for the for the webinar subject Okay, Grace. Looks like no question so far. Uh, yes. Maybe we can close this webinar. So everyone, if still have any question after this, you can send email to me. Uh, I will write the, my email after this. Uh, uh, you can ask any question reg regarding to the secret breaker testing. Uh, just a moment. Okay, I think any other information you want to share, Grace, to the attendees? Or maybe you can close. Yes, uh, just a little reminder, please do in a survey before you quit the webinar and the certificate will be sent to you in two days time and also the recording. So thank you again for attending. Thank you so many. We hope to thank see you again. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.